So let's flick the switch and see what happens. Success! <laughs> this is just awesome. Great. So this is the first step in building this computer. So before I could put in the new machine or the new system, I had to take apart the machine as it was. I had already installed a Raspberry Pi 3 for testing purposes. So I first had to remove the Raspberry Pi, which was mounted on some, on some foam board. Then I put in the CD-ROM and a floppy drive. And the idea is that as soon as the emulators on Raspberry Pi support um, Rob Smith's floppy bridge, I would be able to read real Amiga disks with the system, which is quite nice, I think. So I put in these um, and that looked already great. I then went on and mounted a bracket inside the machine with two USB ports so that I could plug in controllers and stuff from the outside of the case without opening it and putting it into the Raspberry Pi. I will have to come up with a method to connect these to the Raspberry Pi later. And then I was stuck with the problem that there was this LCD driver board and the Raspberry Pi which had to be mounted securely inside the case. And I didn't want to just use hot glue. Um, and I came up with a sandwich solution, which uh, involved two layers of 3D printed um, brackets, which would mount on, on top of each other and would then just clip into the place where the old motherboard was. So that was my plan. And I took a pencil and designed this on paper and then actually did a 3D print and this is what I ended up with. So in order to get all this tech stuff, the Raspberry Pi and the um, video driver board safely mounted inside the case, I had to 3D print a few parts and these will be sandwiched together using these standoffs. So first step is to actually mount the Raspberry Pi on top of this. You can see the holes are matching up, I hope. Uh, let's do this first. So the Raspberry Pi is mounted. We will have to put this in here, which should fit nicely. Yeah, it does. Not much room, but should do the trick. The USB ports are all available from this side and only the SD card slot is on this side. So this is quite nice. So next up, we mount um, the screen controller board on this. We have two boards. This one right here, which I guess is a backlight board. And the other one, the bigger one, which is already inside the case. And let's start with this one. That's in there too. 
So now comes this controller board. So that's mounted on here. Next thing is to mount, well, first to plug these cables back in to this other board right here. Okay, so this is connected again. Now we can actually mount the Raspberry Pi on top. And for that we first screw in these standoffs. So there's pretty little room to go by here. it nice little Raspberry Pi driver board sandwich all nice and clean and that goes down on these plastic standoffs inside the case those things but I first have to properly put in all the cables and extend the power cable um, and switch it to a USB type C so that I can plug it in here so that is that nice little Raspberry Pi sandwich I'm pretty pleased with this it's, it's, it looks actually Quite nice. Cool. We'll have to heat sink the uh, Raspberry Pi before I close this up. Okay. The keyboard of this machine is a standard IBM AT keyboard. It's actually quite clicky. Some keys are sticking a little. I did already clean this completely, took off all the keys, cleaned the keys. Um, if this would have been a C64 in the end, I would have put those um, key stickers with the Petsky characters on it onto this. But since this computer is for my son and my son decided that he wanted to have an Amiga, I guess we will just have to figure out how to do Amiga keys. <coughs> so since this is a standard 5-pin DIN connector, and um, the Raspberry Pi doesn't provide an input for this. I came up with this construction, which is a classic five pin DIN connector, which connects to this, goes in here. And this ends on a PS2 connector, which again goes into this, which then ends in USB, which can simply be plugged into a Raspberry Pi, which is quite neat. So this is the keyboard. Um, there's still a hole here um, where the keyboard connector from the um, standard PC motherboard which was in here um, came out. So I will have to figure out how to mount this inside this case. It does actually fit in here. There's a little fiddling. You can see it's coming out there. And my first idea is to just use double-sided foam tape which I wrap around and then put back in and I will have a look at this might actually work. Let's see if it 
could go like this. No, that's too little. Still does come out. Let's try a second layer of this tape. That could actually work. Now, I have to fill this in here. Good. Let's try this. Yeah, it's in there for good. It's a bit wobbly, but it won't come out. It's in there. Nice. Okay, one problem solved. Next up, we have the problem that we actually have too many USB plugs. We do have the USB plug from, from the um, CD-ROM drive, which is in here. Actually, a SATA drive and I did attach this using this small SATA to USB adapter from some generic um, external hard disk enclosure. So this is the first USB plug and then we have this USB plug which actually connects the keyboard. We have this USB dongle which is used for the mouse that makes three. Then we have um, the speaker cable, which is four. And that wouldn't leave us with any free ports because the uh, Raspberry Pi actually has four USB ports. And to get around this, oh, exactly here are the, and here are two external um, USB ports that I mounted with the mounting plate, which you can't see well right now, they're here. Two USB ports, there's one free room, don't know what to do there yet. So we have actually six USB cables that need to be plugged into four ports. So I came up with the solution to use this old, I guess this is a USB 2.0 um, powered USB hub. So won't draw power from the Raspberry Pi, which is good. So we can actually use these external USB ports without worrying about uh, under voltage. And that comes with this five volt plug, which I will connect just like the Raspberry Pi input directly to one of those power cables. So the power comes from there. Then we have a powered four port hub, which actually then again, plugs into one of the USB ports. So this goes here, this goes in one of the USB ports of the Raspberry Pi and gives us four more USB 2.0, which is not a problem speed-wise because the speakers don't transfer any data, they just need the power. So I could um, also directly connect them um, or the USB cable to one of the power sources. Um, the CD-ROM drive actually does draw power, but doesn't have uh, the super speed that um, the uh, transfer rate is would be an issue. The mouse has very low transfer rate, so no problem there. And finally, the keyboard, the same as the mouse, low transfer rate, so USB 2.0 won't be a problem. So there will actually one USB 2.0 port and two USB 3.0 ports left on the Raspberry Pi to connect the external ports to, which is good. So we do have two 3.0 ports um, via this metal plate over here. Okay, so let's get this USB thing sorted out. And um, for that, I need to come up with a solution because actually, uh, right now there are only those uh, little uh, pin connectors on here. And what I have here are old crusty USB cables, two of them, which I will cut the um, connectors off and somehow attach them to this. And then we have two 
more USB connectors, which can just plug into the Raspberry Pi. That's the next thing to do. So now we have to find proper spot to connect to and I think we already do have this spot. It might be this one. There's a USB cable connected to right now, which I don't use anymore because this was for the Raspberry Pi 3 and there's a Raspberry Pi 4 now. And for my testing purposes, I put in a Raspberry Pi 3. So this is quite the ideal spot to do this. Okay, so that will now that will now connect to this and give this power and then we can plug in all the different USB cables. That's very nice. Okay, so that's done. Cool. And I did not even have to kill any of the plugs here, which is really nice. Just have to cut these cables and that's all. This is complete separate adapter which can be detached if needed. Here are some of the um, main panel cables like LED reset, power on off switch. I will connect these eventually to the um, machine but for that I have to find the correct scripts that run on the Raspberry Pi to actually uh, start and stop this whole thing. There was. Then I guess we are ready to put this all together. I moved the camera a little to give you a better close-up shot of all this. This is the whole Raspberry Pi construction I made. The Raspberry Pi is on top and the um, LCD PCB is on the bottom. And this will go in down there connected to these standoffs on these holes right here and there. Um, powers coming from the power supply right here. So there's a USB-3, uh, USB-C cable which connects to the power supply um, via this. And there's a very, very flat, let me get this out, very, very flat HDMI cable because you can see it's quite, it's in here, it's really flat and it's a 90 degree angle because this all has to be turned around like this. And then there's basically no clearance on this side. So I had to find a solution for that and that was this kind of cable which is a little bit more expensive than the usual uh, HDMI cables 
but it works so that's good enough for me um, the power could be connected here I did connect it here which is okay too so we won't be using US, uh, VGA and we won't be using the composite out so I guess this is a connection where the HDMI cable goes to the Raspberry Pi. So this is a pretty long cable, as you can see, just to connect to this thing here. But we will now put this in here. The micro SD card slot down here. See this? Silvery. No, you can't the silvery thing and because I won't be able to reach this I actually got a SD card extender which also supports the full size SD card so I have to put this in first before um, putting in the Raspberry Pi let me check if I'm really in the port yes I am okay that's in so now we can put this down because we have all the connections made. Next we have to connect the various USB things and this SD card extender has to go somewhere and I think I will for now just put this down here somewhere. Okay, for now, and actually, it does work quite well. So then we will connect the HDMI connection so that we actually use our screen with the Raspberry Pi. Okay, and this goes in here. That is our HDMI connection. Nice. So next up we will have to handle the whole USB stuff. the CD-ROM which we will plug in here then we should probably connect the USB hub to the Pi but first we do some cable management again This will go on into one of the two 
USB point two USB ports down there. That one, that one. So these are the USB point two. These are the USB point three, uh, three point oh. So point three. And these two cables will go into the USB three point oh. USB connectors on the Pi. That is that. Okay, so final thing we plug into our USB hub is the little mouse dongle, which will go always the other way around here. I think before we close the whole machine up, it's time for a little test run. And let's see what it does. Okay, screen's still working, that's good. Oh, look at this. We got a Raspberry Pi screen. Failed to open device SD card. Oh yeah, that's true, because didn't plug it in. Okay, let's try this again with a plugged in SD card, I guess. And let's not forget to plug in the keyboard. Maybe. Okay, guess we're good to go. Let's check it out. Oh, that's the familiar Raspberry Pi screen. Oh, I have no battery in the mouse, so there will be no mouse for now. Okay, so the machine seems to be up and running, but not booting. That may be because I did plug in the CD-ROM. So maybe if I unplug the CD-ROM drive, let's try this. Good thing I have the USB thingy up here. Let's try again. I assume this is some kind of software problem. Turns out the SD card extender is defective. So I had to fiddle around a little to get the SD card in the Raspberry Pi without taking it out. Use the flashlight, needle nose pliers and my glasses to get a good look. This goes back to wherever it, wherever it came from. Um, next problem is that the distribution I'm using here, which I guess is Emiberry, um, or the Emiberry emulator, seems to boot into a specific resolution which this screen does not support. So in order to fix this, I will have to hook up the Raspberry Pi to a different monitor to adjust the resolution and then hook it back up to this monitor. So I have a monitor here, as you can see in the background. This over there is my monitoring monitor where I have connected my iPad so I can see what I'm doing and showing um, without always looking at the uh, iPad while, while filming. And so I will hook this Raspberry Pi up to the, the, the other monitor and then we'll go from there. Rainbow. Hmm. Okay. Guess I have to check the SD card again. Found another one of these SD card readers. Found out that the SD card was okay. That SD card reader was definitely corrupt. And that the distribution wouldn't boot on Raspberry Pi 4. So found an old SD card with an earlier distribution, tried that one, that booted until the boot screen, then blacked out again. Tried a different monitor, tried another monitor, both won't go through with the boot process. So I finally decided on um, using RetroPie for now. And this is where we are at. Let's switch it on. was a real pain. Also lost an SD card inside this machine. Can't find it. Drop down. It's gone. And there we go. So I have definitely, I definitely have to go and order some good known SD card extenders. 
I guess we should plug in some gamepad real quickly. So there's a gamepad. Because next order of business would be to actually register the gamepad and the, the buttons. But seems to work. All is good. That's pretty nice. We have to configure the sound. I guess this still comes out through HDMI and won't do much. One gamepad detected. Okay, let's do this. D-pad. And you just have to push a button and then do whatever it says. Select. And here we are in RetroPie. Before we go any further with software testing, I think I will actually put the system together completely. I did have to get rid of all my cable management to unscrew the power supply to get to the missing SD card, which is still missing. Get that keyboard out of the, out of the way. So we'll have to screw in the drives, which are just sitting here. We have to find proper placement for the SD card reader, which I will for now just hang out of here until I have a proper one, which hopefully works much better than this one. As I said, these drives are, or at least this drive is not working now. Okay, that is that. And now we have to find space for the USB hub and the speakers. So I will clean this again with some alcohol. And then I will put this on this side instead of this side. And for that I will have to clean this too because this is really quite dirty. I'll just switch the machine on by accident. And then we will put some double-sided tape on there again. Just notice that the windows open and it's quite loud. So there's a sticky tape and we will just put this down right here. And that's perfect. So the cables have enough room. You can easily plug in and out stuff. That's good. Next question is what to do about the speakers. I did use these speakers before in another build. There's no video from that build, um, but there's very little room here. I could put these in here and in here for now, which I guess I will do. And since they are magnetic on the back side, I can just plug them in there. It's not a perfect solution, but I guess this is the way I will go for now. So next order of business would be to disassemble these. 
and we'll go from there. So let's put in the speakers somehow. Easiest way would be to just put them on like this using their own magnetic force. We don't need this. So we just put in the speaker like, oh, that'll work. To get out the other ones too. There's not enough room to grab on for the speaker. So again, there's another one. Let's put this in there for now. Okay, so. So I guess I will put on some of the cable ties to at least hold it in place a little. So let's close this up. My SD card just turned up. Hmm. So here's the finished product. We have the CD-ROM and disk drive which are both currently disabled because Raspberry Pi tried to boot from uh, CD-ROM and that took quite a while in the boot process. There are some scratches I can't do anything against. This is the back side where the power switch is and the power input. This is still the ugly duckling side. We have the keyboard connector which is firmly in there. We have the volume knob for the speakers. We have the SD card reader which I will have to switch and one of the speakers, the other one is on the other side. I will have to do some 3D printing designing to get some proper housing for the speakers and some bracket for the SD card reader and the volume knob. I want to go into the front of the case which is over here. There was a brightness knob or contrast knob at some point. So I want to connect this um, volume knob to here. Here's also a reset switch. I want to use this to shut down the machine. So that will be something. Here's actually a power light, which isn't be used right now. I will be using this as the power light or some, some of these up here. There's also a disc light. Um, I will connect these. But this will be all in part three, which will come somewhere down the road. For now, this is a working, properly working Amiga. But there's actually something we have to do. And the first thing is to give this the Commodore batch. And that will go right here. So this button originally was to release the, um, the screen to tilt it a little. Then we will give the keyboard a label. This is a bit big, so my son decided on a smaller one, which is this right here, which says Commodore A500, which fits there quite nicely. Okay, that's that.
I did actually rub off the original logo from the mouse with some alcohol and put on the Amiga check mark, which looks quite nice now. So we have a matching mouse and I have a black controller with a Commodore logo from a different project and as you can see the second chicken lip is a bit torn. So all this goes nicely with this whole construction. Turned out really nice, I think. So let's give this a try. It's actually a bit loud. So that would be also one thing to tackle to change the fan in the power supply. And as you can see, this boots directly into emulation station and the Amiga. So using the controller, we can now start any game we like. And of course we will start with the classic, which is the great Gianna Sisters. So I did activate drive noises. Okay, so you can turn off the drive sounds and I think I will do this down the road. Um, actually going with emulation station or RetroPie, uh, I guess was the right uh, way to go because uh, if my son starts the machine, it lands right here and he can, can simply select the game he wants to play. Um, he doesn't have to bother with workbench and stuff like that for now. Um, so I'm, I'm quite happy with this and it looks amazing. This iPad screen is just awesome. Great colors, great brightness. I really love it. So this machine did turn out great and I guess there will be a part three down the road where I um, come up with solutions for the speakers and the volume knob and stuff like that, the SD card reader and that will be in the near future, I guess. So that's it for now. Thanks for watching. And if you have any questions, comments, ideas, please leave them in the comment section below. Thanks and bye-bye. This is Retro is your new black. If you are new to the channel, please like and subscribe. Thanks for watching and until next time.